A good evening YouTube. It's time to take a little closer look at some of these Craftsman C3 Lithium Ion Battery Management System or BMS boards. I'll take a look at the earlier model extended capacity boards. They're simpler and not conformally coded so it's easier to identify part numbers. Actually the earlier boards seem to be more of a battery protection circuit than a full BMS. I took some close-up pictures of some of the circuit boards with my camera and USB microscope. Here's some of what I found. The PCB manufacturer is Wan Yin Printed Circuit Board Company Limited from Taiwan. I'll put a link to their web page in the video description along with links to part descriptions, etc. They seem to manufacture PCBs for things like small switch mode power supplies like USB chargers as described on the web page in the video description. And this here's a date code 2009 week 11 most likely. And the main ICU2 is over here and let's take a look at that up close. This is the main IC on these earlier boards. Looks like a part number 8254AA. That's likely a Seiko Instruments S8254A battery protection IC for three or four serial cell packs. Again, the, I'll put a link to the, this web page or PDF file in the video description. So if we go down here, there's a block diagram. So the block diagram shows that it's pretty much just a series of voltage comparators and they all get ORed together to drive various internal signals. You can see here are the four, four cells, VC1, VC2, 3, 4, and then there's resistor divider networks, and uh, again, all this is internal to the IC. Table 1 has a lot of information here. The details aren't really important, but the IC does overcharge, over discharge, and over current protection plus some charge management. And the main point of interest here is that all these voltage levels are all built into the different IC models. You can see there's all these uh, 54AA, 54AB, uh, and they all have different uh, overcharge voltages, you know, 415, 425, 4075, just lots of different uh, numbers there. And it is a 16-pin SSOP package, pinout shown here in figure 2 and table 2. And this seems to match up with the PCB wiring, at least I've checked the VC1, 2, 3, and 4 connections, since I know where those are on the PCB. And then some interesting signals. COP output drives the charge MOSFET, you can see here. And DOP drives the discharge MOSFET, and I'll talk a little bit more about those later. Here in Table 4, you can see the IC draws typically 12 up to 30 microamps while it's running and about a tenth of a microamp when it's uh, in power down mode. Here in figure 9 is a charging and discharging cycle and you can see the charge cycle in action in one of my previous C3 charging videos and you can note when the charging voltage rises above the setting in the chip, the COP output which controls the charge MOSFET is shut off. Then if the cell voltage drops below that setting, and it's not really shown here, but this cycle here of going up and down, uh, this can actually drop below this dotted line and then charge again and again and again and that is re-enabled and charging continues until I think at least one of the cells stays above this uh, this point here so 
uh, at the very last cycle the charging will go up it'll shut off if the voltage doesn't drop that's where it stays and you get a similar uh, effect on discharge it goes down uh, and if the cells don't recover above this point uh, it stays shut off uh, one note down here this remark it only requires constant current charging and this uh, matches some of my earlier uh, speculation and also test results so essentially this uh, charging cycle is similar to uh, the fast charge cycle on something like the IMAX B6 charger so this is what gives them a 45 to 60 minute charge time there seems to be no provision for true balance charging uh, they just charge up until at least one cell reaches the maximum voltage and then stop so they're not doing the constant voltage charging nor are they ensuring that all the cells get up to that voltage only one of them because you could see in the block diagram they just or everything together so any one cell getting to voltage and that's it and you can see there's the four basic uh, states that the battery's in it's in normal state uh, when it's being charged state two is when it's overcharged state three is when it's over discharged and then state four there's a little time delay built in uh, you can see the over discharge delay time you set that on with a capacitor and then uh, the chip powers down once the battery's uh, discharged or over discharged then it powers down and waits to be charged again